Que lo que mi gente, yo soy Ricky de Bilingue Blogs and today I'm going to show you how to effectively use your vocabulary book along with your grammar book to learn Spanish or any language for that matter. So stay tuned. If you've been following my channel for a while, then you know that I always encourage you guys to purchase grammar books and vocabulary books to learn Spanish. I even have a method that I used to learn Spanish and that I'm going to use to learn other languages where I combine the vocabulary from my vocabulary book and the grammar from the grammar book and just practice with that and kind of make them work together so that I can make the language stick together very quickly. I want to show you guys my technique for doing so. O sea, yo lo hice y ustedes ven como hablo yo, yo hablo como, como dominicano, pero yo todavía estoy utilizando el vocabulario que yo aprendí cuando yo tenía 12 años. I do want to say that if you don't have a grammar book yet, if you don't have a vocabulary book, you can check out bilingueblogs.com where I recommend my top four grammar books, my top four vocabulary books. You can purchase them there um, through through the website. Obviously, they're not my books, but I just put them on there for, for you to reference, and so feel free to check that out. So the first thing that we have to do is find some structure. As I mentioned this in my How to Learn Spanish on Your Own video. You have to find structure that can be through your grammar book. Um, some of the grammar books don't have the best table of contents. They teach you the correct things, but not in the correct order. So that's why I recommend going online and finding an online curriculum. I recommend this one here to anyone who asks me a question on Instagram about, you know, where do I find a syllabus, where do I find a curriculum? And then if you're intermediate, then I recommend this one for you. This one is completely in Spanish, but it's habla ya. I think it's a really good, strong syllabus that will, that will give you some structure. So that's step number one. Find some structure, get a curriculum, get a syllabus, and that's, that's it before you even touch your grammar book. So we'll go more in depth with this a little later, but I want to give you the overview. The next thing that we have to do is set up our notebook for our lesson. So how do I do this? I start off with about two to three pages dedicated for the grammar portion of the lesson that I'm going to learn from the book. Then I leave about one to two pages for my vocabulary. And then I leave about one to two pages to practice the activities given to me in my grammar book. And lastly, I have about a page or so for my own original sentences where I combine the grammar and the vocab together from that whole section and my grammar book. And that's how you're going to want to set up your, your notebook or whatever you're using to take notes because, like I said, everybody doesn't take notes by writing them down physically. Some people like to do it on, on the computer. That's completely fine. It's up to you. So the first thing that we're going to do is attack the vocabulary. We need to study the vocabulary first because that's what we're going to be applying to our grammar. So you have to know it before you get to the grammar part, right? So, so how do I set up my vocabulary sheet? I like to do it this way. You can do it with note cards. You can do it using Anki online or, or Quizlet, whatever you want to use. But this is my method and it's worked well for me. I have three columns here. I have on the right side, Spanish, in the middle, English, and on the left, Spanish. And I really wrote my vocabulary down that way. So we're gonna start with the vocabulary. How are we gonna find these vocabulary words? We're gonna open our grammar book to the grammar section that we're working on, and we're gonna open our vocabulary book to the category of vocabulary that we wish to work on. With those two being open, we're gonna find the words that we're looking for. With the category of, of Spanish, it's gonna be a, a whole theme. So for example, how to fix a car. You're gonna have verbs in there, you're gonna have adjectives, you're gonna have nouns, things like that. Depending on which book you get, you're going to wanna write all of those down. But the lesson that we're focusing on today is AR verbs. So we wanna make sure that we definitely take note of our regular AR verbs. After you've written down your vocabulary from the vocabulary book for that category, you want to also go to the grammar book in that section that you're working on and get the vocabulary from there as well. So, as I said, we're working on present tense conjugation for regular AR verbs. So, there's a list provided for me in this grammar book with regular AR verbs that I can conjugate, that I can practice conjugation with. So, while I'm writing these words down, I'm gonna be saying them out loud because I wanna get that kinesthetic learning in and I also wanna get that, that oral speech, you know, practicing my pronunciation, practicing my accent, and just speaking it out helps it to stick with you more. You, you say stuff, you're, you're more likely to stick with it as opposed to just keeping it in your head. It's easier to forget. Once we have those words all written down, we're going to study them for a little bit. We're gonna review them quickly, but we're gonna move on because we have a lot of time to come back and review those 
and we want to get to our grammar. My grammar sheet looks like this. It has a chart like this. This is my favorite chart. This chart here is the chart that I've used to learn every single conjugation, to learn every single pronoun. It helps to compartmentalize what you're learning, you know? For, so if you're talking about yo, then this is this will always go with yo, but it can't go with nosotros, it can't go with tu. So I like to do it this way because it kind of gives me boundaries for using only this ending here or this word here with this pronoun. That's why I like using this chart here. And you can have multiple charts like this in your section. And this one, I just have one because we're working on one thing, which is AR verb conjugation. But if you didn't know your subject pronouns and you also didn't know how to conjugate, then you can have two. You can have one for the subject pronouns, you know, like yo, tu, el, el, usted, nosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes, and another one for the AR verb endings, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna study that grammar lesson. I'm gonna read what's in that grammar book and make sure to just take good notes on the things that stick out to me, things that will help me remember how this works. The next portion of the grammar is to use very, very, very basic sentences to make sure that I understand the concept. So I'm gonna use that chart. I'm gonna take some of those AR verbs from the vocabulary list that, I've create, that I created beforehand and I'm gonna mix those vocabulary words with those endings, you know, to conjugate them correctly. So I can choose any random subject pronoun, I can choose any random name or names and make small sentences with those vocabulary words. For example, Miguel y Maria cantan. I don't wanna get really elaborate with these sentences because we have time for that later. But for now, we just wanna make sure we have the conjugation down that we understand the grammar portion right now. So Miguel y Maria cantan, that's it. We just wanna make sure that we have that correct conjugation. That's a small sentence, it's basic. That's it, okay? So we keep doing that for a while. We can go through all of these subject pronouns and like I said, a few names, you know, do that a few times. And then we can move on to the next part, which will actually be using the activities in our grammar book. The grammar books are usually full of activities to do. As we do these activities, we may not understand every single sentence in the activities, and that's fine, but we do kind of want to passively pay attention to the structure of the sentence because one, one day we're going to be speaking like this. One day we're going to be using these sentences. So you do want to pay attention to the sentences. But the most important part is making sure that you understand that specific part of grammar that you're working on. So go through the activities, make sure to write the answers down. And also I mentioned before getting a grammar book that has a CD available with it or some type of, some type of audio file available with it. So the book that I have here actually has an audio file available with it. This will allow us to hear some of the exercises that we're working on. So you can listen to those after you fill them out to make sure that you got them correct. So, you know, it's kind of like a checks and balances, but at the same time, you can repeat what the person is saying because, you know, it's a native Spanish speaker speaking Spanish. So work on your pronunciation and, and you know, your flow, the syntax of, of your speech, but also you can listen to what they're saying, work on your, comp your comprehension. Obviously you have the text there to read it beforehand, but if you want, you can play the audio first and then do the activity to kind of, you know, see if you can understand what they're saying beforehand. It's up to you. You can do it any way that you like, but just know that the option exists. So that's why I'm really big on getting those grammar books with uh, the audio, with the audio available because, you know, you don't want to just write and read. We're not going to only be writing and reading in Spanish. Whereas most of the time we're going to be speaking and listening. So the next step is very, very, very important. After you've studied your vocabulary, after you've studied your grammar, after you've done your basic sentences and then the, the practice activities, now it's time to put it all together. Now it's time for you to, to, to combine the vocabulary that you've been working on with the grammar that you've been working on. And when I say the vocabulary, I'm not talking about only the verbs from the present tense, but all of the other vocabulary from that category as well. It's very important that you do this well. And this one, you don't really have anybody to, to correct you. So you really wanna make sure that you understand the grammar before you do this. And you know, make sure that you're not making mistakes. And you can always do checks and balances, you know, kind of write your sentence and then uh, compare it to the, to the practice activity sentences or compare it to the grammar lesson, make sure that you're using the right endings and so on and so forth with your conjugation and things of that sort. So you can write as many sentences as you want. I, re I always recommend 
20 or more, I wouldn't do anything less than 20. The goal is that you master this before you move on to the next thing. So you want to do a lot of sentences. Make them real to you. Make them realistic to you. Even if you've never done anything in this category, what are you more likely to do? Or what are the people around you more likely to do? Um, the one thing that you want to focus on is not making everything yo. When I'm dealing with my students, I, I tell a lot of them to make their own sentences and all they say is yo, this, yo, that, yo, whatever. It needs to be ellos, it needs to be ustedes, it needs to be tu, usted. You know, use all the subject pronouns, use people's names that you know in, in real life, you know. You want to make this real to yourself so that it sticks with you more. And then finally, once all that is done, once all of that is done, then it's time for you to, to go practice it in the real world. You have to get on some language exchange site, whether that's Tandem, Speaky, Italki, Hello Talk, whatever it is. If you have a friend that you work with, practice with them. If you have family members, practice with them. Like you wanna put this stuff into practice because if you keep it all in here, it's not gonna do you any good only in your head. You have to put it into practice. It may sound scary, but it's really the only way to get better. Mistakes are not something to trip you up, but they are stepping stones. You know, it may have tripped you up before, but then it becomes a stepping stone to help you get to the next level. So don't be afraid of mistakes. That's where I went wrong. And that's why it took me about two and a half years to become fluent and about four years to actually talk to natives in a comfortable way because I was, I was so afraid of making mistakes. So don't make my mistake. That's it guys. That's my method for using grammar and vocabulary books to learn Spanish. Or like I said, you can use this to learn any language. How have grammar books and vocabulary books been been working for you? Or or do you just use Duolingo? What, what, what have you been using to learn Spanish? I will like to close by saying this. These are not the only things that you can use to learn Spanish, nor should they be the only things that you use to learn Spanish. They can get you to a good level, but a lot of things that are said out in the streets, out in real conversations, you know, colloquial phrases, things of that sort, they are only found in one-on-one -on -one conversation or in group settings where you're talking with a lot of Spanish speakers at one time so you do have to get out there and and you know apply it in the real world and you know listen to music watch shows get really into it but this is a great contributor to to mastering grammar mastering vocabulary so I encourage you all to do so as well if you found this video helpful go ahead and give it a thumbs up go ahead and share it with your friends on social media that's it for today guys que Dios me lo bendiga y nos fuimos.